Hello? Yeah. Okay, so we start now. Yeah, I think. Uh, how about uh, that, uh, Mr. Tai? Okay. Yes, we can start oh, okay. whenever you are ready. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Microsoft Excel Workshop Day 1 that is being organized by the Academic Committee in ISOCMS. My name is Abdurrahman Atas, a third year student at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. I'm pretty sure that most of us have already used Microsoft Excel before, or importantly, will need to use it one day. Generally, Microsoft Excel will help you store a large amount of data and give you the ability to translate them into tables and graphs. Microsoft Excel has many other benefits that help you to do tremendous tasks, such as building data with tables and graphs. All this and more will be touched within today's and tomorrow's session. So our speaker today has excellent skills that can help us improve our knowledge in Microsoft Excel. Furthermore, he has several experiences as he has more than 23 years of corporate and training experience. He is also a computer programmer, and not only this, but also he is a software architect. People address him as Excel Shivo due to the extensive dexterity he has on that program. So let me welcome Mr. Kai Tsuta. Hello, good morning, good evening, good and good afternoon, no matter where are you coming from? Hi, good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning, okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. See, I'm so excited. When I'm excited, I'm out of my wood. How many of you are excited at this present moment? Can you type excited if you are excited? Even though you're not excited, please type excited as well. Not negotiable, must type excited. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Aha. Barilla. Thank you, Noria. Okay, thank you, Shah. Yes, I'm so excited. So I just want to have a quick, uh, I just want to know where I, uh, where you are coming from and your Excel level. No right, no wrong. I just want to know where you are coming from so that I'm able to see how fast and how deep I can go on. So just for information, if that's it, I'm talking about Excel alone, I can talk nonstop. <laughs> okay, in order not to exhaust everyone, I just want to conserve within the timing we have and please type in the chat your name, where you are coming from, and your Excel level. One will be uh, someone is finding us at the beginning, a Z 100, that means some, uh, 10 will be someone is at high level. No right, no wrong, it's perfectly okay. You just type where you are coming from and your name, so that I'm able to address your name much more correctly. Okay, I can see, okay, level one, King King is from Malaysia, Abdullah, Somalia. Busan for Yemen, Malaysia, Weishan, level one, level two, level four. Okay, I'm so excited. Yes, keep that coming, keep that coming. At the same time, for those you can share the link to your friends and colleagues, you can just pass them and they are able to join. And this Zoom, we are able to hold up to 500 people. Yeah, we are able to hold up to 500 people so you can ask them to join. Yes, I can see most of you. Oh, one of them is coming from, I think, Sonia, Malaysia, level seven. Okay. If bless you are level seven, I may disappoint you certain point of time <laughs> because the things, oh, level 10, Abdul. Okay, yeah, level 10. Level 10, this, I will disappoint you greatly. <laughs> if you want to have, if you want me to excite you, you may want to stay back. I can show something extra. So, okay, very good. So now, I would like to encourage you to do this one in order for you to have a better experience here. So therefore, the first one, I would like to invite you to turn your phone into silent mode uh, because it's only two, uh, two hours plus three hours. So you will be survived without phone. I'm granted you will survive without phone. It's perfectly okay. See, it's tested. I'm still alive without phone. <laughs> okay. At the same time, your sitting posture is very important. If possible, sitting straight, unless your body has some constraint. Otherwise, I will invite you to sit straight. So they are able to focus much more better. And using the chat, I'll be using a lot of chat. I'm using another device to chat your messages. If you have some question, you're not quite sure, please feel free to use the chat to ask questions. And if you use your voice, there'll be too many interruptions. So I will appreciate you to use the chat greatly. Yes, yes. Malaysia time. I want to know when is the Malaysia praying time? Uh, Islam. 
I'm not quite sure. Okay, we well, waiting for the answer. So for, okay, 720, I believe, yes, we can have a 720. Now we have about 11 more minutes. Yes, can, definitely can. So while uh, praying, how long will you need for the prayer? I am not quite sure how long, what's the timing you need? So while uh, someone, some of you, you need to go for 15 minutes prayer, perfectly okay. You need a 15 minutes, we will have a short break. If you need a short break, I will not give yourself a break. For those who are not Muslim, you are not going for prayer, I will share something extra. Because this session will be recorded, eventually it will be uploaded to the YouTube channel as well. So take a lot of notes if you want to, you can screenshot and yes, ask questions in the chat. And towards the end, we have allocated a lot of ample time for you to ask questions. Literally, you can ask me questions that about Excel, don't ask me how to cook because I only know how to eat. I do not know how to cook much. So that'll be enough. <laughs> okay, so now just want to have a quick chat. How many of you have seen me before? Because this is very important. Because you have not seen me before, why I want to talk to, listen to this guy talking blah, 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 so long. I have no idea. How many of you have seen me before? You can have yes. If you have not, you can say no. Yes or no. Have you seen me before? Online, offline? No, 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 no. Yes, no, no, no. So many no, so many yes. Okay, I'm so excited. Okay, like, let me have a quick introduction about myself. And just now, thank you for the quick introduction. Now, a very fast introduction. I want to relate my past experience so that I'm able to see how I'm able to assist you. So I, these are the numbers. Uh, these are the key uh, milestone of my career development. Uh, first, 1998, I was a programmer. I love programming. I can do coding with my eyes closed. How many of you, you love programming? Can you type me? If you do not, if you hate programming, can you type zero? No right, no wrong. <laughs> if you love, if you know how to program, type me. Otherwise, you can type zero. Yes, perfectly okay, zero, zero, zero. Very good. Do you know Excel, you are able to do some programming in Excel that you are able to do the work while you are sleeping. When you wake up, the work is done. Yes, it's true, it's true. I have done it a lot of time. So because of that experience, even though it's 20 plus years ago, it's still relevant today. And I, so what I can help you with that kind of uh, experience, I'm able to give you some direction or where, how, and where, and how you are able to automate your tasks, especially those that are routine, repetitive. And in the year 2007, I started on my career as an SAP consultant. SAP is ERP software, so I was a consultant. What does that mean? I know a lot of data is residing in, in the computer system, and a lot of time people just download and do some number crunching. So rather than doing something repetitive, I'm able to share my experience with you. How we are able to shorten the time. For example, I have one lady shorten out about five days kind of work, just normal Excel, no automation, no macro. It just, she can complete the whole thing. Instead of five hours, she can complete within five minutes, normal Excel. So this is the thing I'm able to share with you. And in the year 2011, I was a program, uh, project management, uh, project management. So I was project manager. I chase people for report and I submit report for other people. So that means I can share with you what are the good things you are able to do to make your report attractive and your boss will love to read it. Even though you're not working with that skill, when you go to your employment, your intern company will love you very much in the right sense. Huh? Okay, in the year 2013, I was retrenched. That's the time I started on my, on my own. So. Uh, with that experience, I'm able to combine the whole thing. I see Excel is a great tool. So this is today I'm going to share with a lot of you. Uh, a lot of things, provided you ask some questions. Yes, no idea about programming. Now, 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 now we are going to guess. Which one is me? Which one is me? Just to prove my hair were longer back then. <laughs> Which one is me? The front. Okay, yes, the one skinny. La. That's me. La. Okay, let's go to... The 90, yes, just do it. Okay, which one is me? Which one is me? Uh, the one at the back. Yes, the one at the back. T tallest one amongst all. Actually, I'm not that tall. <laughs> I'm just almost standing on the chair just to take a photo. Okay, so that is the whole quick introduction about me and you are able to see how I'm able to assist you in a certain way. So let's get started into Excel because just now I ask the question to rate your Excel level where you are. 
from one to 10, I can see mostly are less than 10. So I would like to invite you to open your blank Excel file, blank Excel file, and we are able to do this slow and steady, slow and steady, so that you are able to see how you are able to get it done a little bit differently. Okay, yeah, this is the one. So this is a blank Excel file, nothing. And some people, okay, Excel is so common, why I want to say a lot of things here. So even though it's so simple, a lot of time people, they use it a bit wrongly and they use Excel to torture themselves. Yes, torture themselves. I've seen so hard it. Okay, now, very commonly, I see majority of you are students. I believe one fine day you will go to workforce. And most likely during your internship or maybe during your first task, it will be something to do with Excel. So I want to start with something almost at the beginning, at the ground zero, near ground zero, to get you started. Even though you are quite good, I will encourage you to temporarily uh, learn. You may learn something differently. So now I want to do some data entry on the numbers. Yes, the thing, the recording is, is ongoing. Yes. And I want to clean some, num uh, some data for staff. Okay, this is a company. I want to keep that for the staff. So maybe I want to have a staff name, staff name. And a lot of time people they clean the name, they will use their mouse to click on the next one. Okay, maybe they are asking for the ID number and they will use their mouse to click the next one. Uh, this is a wrong way, uh, this is wrong way. Let me share with, let me demonstrate. Then, you see a staff, you may want to know the staff uh, department. And they will use their mouse to click. Uh, yeah, unable to click. They click somewhere outside and click back. Yours is overflow the width. And after department, they want to know their role, whether they are, which rank they are in, their role. They use their mouse to click. Maybe it's their salary. Okay, after that, they just click and they use mouse to click the next one. This one, it looks perfectly okay. And just for information, this is not an, it's not an effective way of data entry. So now I would like to invite you to find the key. There's a key called tap key on your keyboard. Tap key on the keyboard. A lot of time, I, I got these surprises as well. Some people, they didn't aware the existence of tap key on their keyboard. The tap, the tap key is on the left side of a keyboard, just above the caps lock just above it. And we are going to use the tab key a lot later on, just for the similar access entry here. Let me share with you again. Let me redo the whole entry again. Now I'm going to key name, name. Instead of using mouse, let me move my mouse away. I use my tab key, tab, go to next one. And now you are able to follow along. ID number, tab, department, tab, row, tab, salary. Only towards the end of your data entry, you only press enter. Press enter, you will go to the beginning, the first column of the next row. So it makes the entry a bit faster and easier. So this one, it looks very trivial and it's not, it looks very negligible. And believe me, a lot of things you are able to make the so-called the navigation, the movement in Excel to a different fields, a lot of including the formula. Whenever you're using tab key, your life will be way, way faster. Really, later I will share with you a more tab key. If let's say I want to use a, a modern term, people use a hashtag. Tab key is equivalent to this hashtag. What does that mean? BFF. If you know that, you can type in the chat. <laughs> best friends forever. Yes, thank you very much. It's best friend forever. So in, in terms of using data entry, even though you are using your computer or some other system, tab key will help you to do data entry faster. And now I'm going to do some data entry here. I will key in alpha, just key in, you may want to key in some other name as well, perfectly okay. Now I'm going to do the navigation using tab key. Let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, let me scroll up. Okay, alpha, tab. 
the ID number it is A123. Tag. This is IT department. Tag. Manager. Tag. Salary is 10,000. And only towards there, I press enter. So I can key in the next one. Bravo. Tag. B234. Tag. This is the sales department. Tag. Executive. Tag. 15,000. Enter. So this one, it looks very smooth sailing, and this is only five columns. If let's say you have more columns, this one will make your data entry faster and easier. Some people may be asking, Ty, um, what if I make a mistake? If I use my arrow key or whenever I move my mouse, uh, somehow the tab key doesn't work. Let me show you what does that mean. Okay, again, Charlie, tab C345. If I use my arrow key and go to next cell. If I press enter, it just go down. It doesn't go towards the beginning of the next row. So it just somehow the, the chain is broken. In order to do some correction and I want to move it back. So I want to use the shift tab, shift tab. Tab key is moving forward. Let me draw, let me move. Okay, let me put some drawing on the screen. If I use the tab key, here, if I, I use the tab key going towards the right side. Tab key is going towards right. If I want to go back, I want to go back. I will use the shift tab key. Shift tab key is to go back. So that with these two keys, you are able to control the movement of your data entry very easily. And remember, tab key is not necessarily workable in your Excel is able to work on your some other program, for example, SAP, some people use other program, similar way for navigation, tap and shift tap. So now let me do the data entry here. I will attempt to make some mistakes. Charlie, tap C, three, four. I want to key in five by key in four, I press tap. I realize I made a mistakes here. So I can use a shift, tap to go back. And a lot of time people will attempt to use their mouse to double click on the cell and start changing. Whenever I move my mouse or use my mouse to double click or do anything inside the spreadsheet or inside the cell, the chain of the movement will be broken. In order to maintain the chain where I've started from a column A, in order to edit the cell, I want to use the F2, the button F2. To edit here, I will use F2. On a certain laptop, F2 were not able to work correctly. So if I see you are pressing F2, it's somehow changing the brightness, it, the volume up or volume down, sometimes it becomes a mute. Different computer will be, have slightly different behavior. So that's the time you want to combine with the function key, Fn, F2. That's only provided when you press F2, it's somehow weird thing appears it doesn't go to the cell and you are able to see this line, the cursor here. So by pressing F2, it allows you to edit the cell. While this is inside here, you are able to use your cursor to move in between them. Your cursor you are able to move. Now you are able to change. Let me do the correction and I continue with the tab key. So this is about management, tab key, and this is a supervisor. Tab key, the salary is 20,000. Then towards the end, I press enter. I press enter. Cool. So I'm, this is how we are able to move the thing forward and backward. Now I want to key into another data, Delta. By the way, this is a NATO alphabet, nothing to do with the current trend. Uh, anything, it, the name, the similar name is just pure coincidence. Okay, D456. Tap, this is a, uh, okay, IT again, tap, executive. You can see whenever it's something similar, it will prompt for you to go to complete and tap this at 25,000 and press enter. So by using this key, your movement, your data will be very, very fast and super easy. Learn something new here.
If you learn something new, can you type yay in the chat? If you learn something new, can you type yay in the chat? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so I believe now is a prayer time for some of you. Okay, for those you are you are going for prayer, I you please go ahead. And for those they are not going for prayer, I will just continue later. We can catch up later. Okay. All right. Thank you. So now I just continue with something here, and I'm going to share more a little bit on how you are able to get um, things done differently. And some people, they will say, this is okay. What if I want to do something different? Especially the moment. Okay, Chip -chip, I think I need to, okay, how many of you still here? Can you type here as well? Can you type here in the chat? If you are still around, can you type here? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you for your participation. Okay. Now, this is the moment. This is a story. A lot of times they have uh, this perception. As a young guy or young lady, he or she is about to go to a place like a Starbucks. Of course, after all the COVID, going to Starbucks and going to take out the laptop, open a, take out the laptop and take out the charger, the adapter, and also take out the notes and place everything on the desk. And suddenly, this person realized, I, uh, I have forgotten something. Can you guess what is that thing? Can you guess? Can you type in the chat? What is the thing this person has forgotten? And the, the, the reaction is so shocking. Yeah, I've forgotten this. Can you guess what is that thing? Yes, thank you. Min, mouse, yes. Hi, Min, welcome to the session. Uh, something much more drastic, not wallet, is mouse. Wallet is still okay. They somehow still okay. They're still cool. Okay, only the mouse, whenever in front of a computer, they have no mouse, they have no way to work. And somehow they're handicapped. Some people say, hey, I'm using laptop. Laptop has something called touchpad. I'm still able to use that one to control mouse. Uh, not really everyone likes to use that and they still prefer to have mouse. So now, similar thing. A lot of people, they have this perception. I need to use mouse to control Excel. Okay, I need to use mouse. Without mouse, there's no way I could do it. How many of you have this kind of perception or you have seen people have this kind of perception before? If yes, can you type yes in the chat? If you have seen someone have this perception, they must use mouse to control Excel. A lot of things in Excel must use mouse, not negotiable. Without mouse, they are unable to use Excel. They need to, they can throw their computer away. Okay, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your participation. Let me show you. Actually, it's not entirely true. Let's learn together how we are able to get this done easily. Back to the same place here. Now I want to do something very, very common. And I want to make the, uh, I want to move the row. For example, I want to move the Bravo. I want to move Bravo towards the end. Normally using the mouse, I will just select, I will go towards the edge of the, you will see there's an icon like this one. I'm going towards the edge. I will drag, I will drag and move it down. While moving down, I hold down, I hold down my shift key, shift key, so that this is moving the entire row, not moving the data, moving the entire row. And I let go of my mouse. You can see this thing is moved. So some people say, hey, I can use this one. Can you prove me without mouse you're able to do this? Okay, let me undo. Undo, I'm pressing Control Z or Control Z to go back. So now I'm going to share with you totally without mouse. <laughs> okay, if, yeah, if you have this kind of data, you are, feel free to follow along. Feel free to follow along and you are able to amaze how you are able to do it. Now to select the entire row, select the entire row, I use Shift Space, Shift Space Bar, Select the entire row. To cut, Control X, alphabet X, X men, Control X. And move it down, move it down. 
If I normal control V, it will not able to work because I'm on the second column. If I go towards the front, I press control V, it has a gap there. So this is not the way we want it to be. Let me control Z to undo. So to move that particular row down without creating a blank space behind, you use control plus, control plus. Let me write on the screen. This is why I need to use mouse. Uh, control plus. Okay, the plus sign on, the, on your keyboard, usually it has a sign with this. As a plus with the equal sign underneath. In order to get the plus sign, you need to use shift. So therefore, the correct key will be control shift plus. If let's say you are using the, the, the broad keyboard where you have the plus sign on the right side, so you can straight away use control plus. They are exactly the same. If your key has a plus and equal together, please use control shift plus to get the same function. So let me show you. Control shift plus. Ta -da! So this is how you are able to move the thing around. Okay, let me read. Some people say, too fast, too fast. Can you be slower? Okay, let me do it again. Let me do it again. To select the row, now I want to move the Charlie. I want to move the Charlie towards above alpha. I want to move the Charlie above alpha. To select the entire row, shift space, shift space to select the entire row. To cut is control X, alphabet X. And going up, just to aware the movement. For the Excel spreadsheet, you will see there's a box, something like this. This one has a name. The name is called active cell, active cell. The location or the destination of whenever we want to paste or insert or cut, it based on the top and left side of it, top and left. So now it's on the left most, so it's nothing here. So you are relying on the top. So that means it will paste it here. You'll paste it on this line. So just remember, based on the active cell, the top and left section of it. So now I move it up here. I want to move the Charlie, the entire row above alpha. I will use control shift plus and ta-da, got it? If you find this interesting and something new to you, could you type O oh, in the chat? If something new and something interesting to you, can you type O oh, in the chat? Thank you, thank you everyone, nice. Finally, I can live without mouse. Yes, yes, I'm so excited. Okay, only for this part. Then people will start, some people they start challenging. Hmm, for the row, you're okay. You, maybe you are lucky, Ty, you're lucky. Then how about column? How about column? Can you do that? Can you do that? Ah, let's do the column as well. Similar thing. Select the entire row is shift space. Select the column, maintain the space key. And now you only need to change the shift towards control. To select the column, select column, use this key, control space. Yes, control space is to select the entire column. And on certain computer, I believe certain computer, especially you have certain uh, other language data uh, entry, for example, Mandarin, whenever you press control space, Maybe your computer will not able to work because the Windows has intercept this particular shortcut key and it treat like you want to change the data entry or language entry mode. So that's the time you can go to your Windows and turn off the particular control space for the language bar. That's something called language bar. So now I just want to control space is to select the entire column. Let me do it again. Huh? Control space. The key, okay, let me type it on the screen. That'll be easier for you to follow. Control space is to select the entire column. Control space, entire column. And meanwhile, to select the entire row, let me entire row, we will be using shift space. 
shift space. Both of them, they have a common key, which is the space bar, the longest key on your keyboard. One is using control, one is using shift. The easiest way for you to differentiate between them, just look at the width. Control, the width is narrower compared to shift. So therefore you can safely associate row, which is the horizontal, the width is broader with the shift key, which is also have a broader width. So this is how I memorize. So let me do it again. Now I want to move the department. They want to select the entire column. Okay, maybe you want to do a row. What do you want to do? Maybe you want to explain a little bit about uh, Okay, I, let me go here. Control space, select entire column. Control X, I want to move towards the front before ID number. So just to make sure the active cell is here. It will base on either on the left or on the top. Now it's on the top most, so therefore it will have no influence. So it will base on the left side of it. Just remember it's on the top most. Otherwise it will be confused. So now I just go here. I use control, shift, space. Hey, let me do this again. Oh, I'm not at the top row. So therefore it's, it's wrong. Okay. So let me do it again. Control X. And sometimes I'm not on the very first row. I want to paste it there. Another way to go around is to select that particular column by pressing Control Space. Then you are able to save. Uh, Control Shift Plus is able to shift the column around. So this is a way how you're able to move them around. So I get the question. I'm not quite understand what about when don't want to select the whole row or column. That means you want to move the particular part of it. It's the same, it's the same method. Maybe I want to move the row. Imagine I want to move the row. By the way, I'm using shortcut key. Somehow it's my subconscious. A lot of time people, they want to select the data until the end, they will use their mouse. No way, they always use their mouse to select. So if I say this is still okay, I only have five rows. What if I have 500 rows? They will just select and pull the mouse and all the way. They wait until they hit 500 rows. Okay, that's taking a bit extreme. What if you have 5,000 rows? They will sit there for about a few minutes just to wait for that moment. The fastest way for you to select the data until the end without using the keyboard. The keyboard shortcut will be something like this. Okay, I'm going to share a lot of keyboard shortcut. Control. Shift down arrow key. Control shift down arrow key. It means from this current active cell going all the way down until I hit the blank. Until I hit the blank. Control shift down. Some people miss. Hey, how, can I go left, right, up as well? The answer is perfectly yes. You can change the arrow key. Rather than down arrow key, you can go to other different direction. Perfectly okay. Let me show you. Control, shift, down arrow key. Now I want to move the row before the department. I will use cut, control, X, and go towards the front. Control, shift, plus. So I'm able to shift out as well. Some people say, I don't want to shift the whole thing. Maybe I want, just want to shift a few cells. Is that possible? The answer is yes. For example, I realized I made a mistake of the data entry. Um, this guy, Alpha, should be 20,000 and Charlie should be 10,000. I want to swap these two cells value. A lot of time, people will just choose to select and redo the whole thing. Actually, it's not necessary. You can use something similar as well by pressing Control X, going down, down. Remember, it goes based on the left, based on the left side of the active cell or the upper part of the active cell. Now, I want to insert there because I'm selecting the cell. The selection will be slightly different. Control Shift Plus. Okay, it works. 
Sometimes it will be, have a different behavior It'll prompt you what you want to do. Ta -da! Okay, so now this is how we're able to move entire row, entire column, partially or a single cell, you're able to do that. So this is the things you could, it definitely is able to help you. Do you learn something different, uh, something new, just about the mouse movement? If yes, can you type yeah in the chat? If you find it something interesting, can you type yeah in the chat? Your participation will definitely give me more energy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. So now let's see. I'm going to say some people are still skeptical. Is that true? I'm able to control almost anything in Excel. Okay, one of the things people they want, they are not quite sure is they want to auto fit. For example, you can see column C, the data is a bit longer than the column width. They want to resize it or they want to double click to auto fit. If that's the things, let me undo. The keyboard shortcut to auto fit is very easy for you to remember. Sometimes different people has a different way of working in Excel. Will you, do you agree? Some people, they use more on the certain part of things. Some people, they are not necessarily on the uh, auto fit. Different people has a different style, a different preference as well. So let me share you this secret. And with this secret, you are able to find the shortcut key that you use very often. And you are able to use that one or just memorize a few shortcut key that you use very often. Just that, very easy. Because if you want to memorize the shortcut key, the list is very, very long, a lot of shortcut key. So by using this one key, only one alphabet, one key, the key is alternate key or odd key and you're able to see or you're able to find where is the shortcut key. Let, let me explain a little bit. Uh, before continue, I want to auto fit the column. To auto fit the column is the location in terms of the ribbon or the menu above here is go towards the home, go towards the home. Now I just show you where's the location. Data will relate back to the odd key. Home and going towards the right side, you will see there's something called format inside format and I can I click on the drop down one of them it says auto fit column width auto fit column width so this is the location this is the place I want to travel in order to trigger the auto fit so now I'm going to use odd key alternate key I press it and let it go if you just do it once, like this one, you can see all the ribbon here, all the tab here, it has all the small alphabet appears underneath. So this is the, the time you are able to place the key on your keyboard as if you are using your mouse to click on the particular tab or ribbon. So now I want to go back, I want to choose home. So the alphabet will be H, will be H, odd H. After that, you will see there's a format. Format, these are the things I want to trigger. So the alphabet is O. Alphabet is O. Odd H O. And inside here, one of them it says auto fit column width. It is I. So if I combine with the previous two alphabet, it will be H O I. So that's a shortcut key to auto fit, odd, H-O-I. You can pronounce it with the sound of be hoi, okay, odd hoi, okay. So it's something memorable. At the same time, maybe you want to auto fit on the row. So you can see auto fit row. Similarly, odd, H-O is the previous two. And this one is A. Wow. Okay. Interestingly. And you can see there are more things here as well. So this is how you are able to find the shortcut key that is relevant to you. So now let's do this together in a slow motion. Let's do this together in slow motion. Odd. Let go of your key. And you can see all the alphabet appears on the screen. H. O, I is auto fit on the column. H O I. Let me undo. 
after I get familiarized with this sequence, I can do like this combo key, odd HOI. You can do it quite fast. After a while, it somehow become your subconscious. Whenever you want to auto fit, you know what key to press. So by using this method, you are able to find the shortcut key that you use very, very often. Is this something good for you? Some, something nice for you? If yes, can you type the word nice in the chat? I want to see. Yes, 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 it's something nice. So this is how I remember how I find my shortcut key. And just for information, this key sequence is not necessarily applies in Excel. It applies for the word PowerPoint and some other application inside Office as well. They are similar sequence. So press the Alt key, let go and see where is the things you want to click. And it's very, very beautiful and a lot of things can be done. And even though like, I want to rename the, the worksheet name here. Normally, I will need to have double click. After I know the sequence or H something, one of the options is about rename worksheet. Let me, okay, maybe how about you find the sequence? What is the shortcut key to change the worksheet name? It's something to do with or alternate H something. If you found it, can you type in the chat? H what? If you find it, can you type in the chat? Yes, thank you, thank you. Ari, yes, H-O-R. Wow, you're very fast, you're a champion. Yes, Alt H-O-R. What does that mean? It means, I press Alt, be home, inside format, and one of them is rename sheet is R. So when it combines together with the previous two alphabet, it's Alt H-O-R. So it's very easy for you to find the things you want to do. Yeah. Feel good? Do you feel good? We managed to find something different. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, H-O-R. Awesome, awesome. Well done, everyone. Okay, so now we have something like this and... Okay. Yee, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, now let me share with you about... Uh, there are more things you could do in the Excel spreadsheet. So this is a very simple way of what the things we could do. And let me see. Okay. If you have some questions, you can type in the chat as well. This is too good. Yes, OMG, this is too, too good. Yes, I love this one. And by using this simple strategy, you are able to discover the shortcut key that's to your calling. <laughs> this is my calling for the shortcut key. Yes, best gift of the holiday. I have forgotten today's holiday. Uh, yeah, today is a Malaysia day and happy Malaysia day to all Malaysian. Uh, and for those who are not quite sure about the history, you can go and Google <laughs> Malaysia Day. <laughs> okay, let's come back to here. I want to do something different and I have all the data here. And sometimes I want to filter, or I want to search for the certain kind of structure or certain information. And this is a very useful method you are able to do as well. One of them is I want to turn on the auto filter. A lot of time after we enter the data entry, we want to filter, we want to search for certain data. So I'm going to share uh, certain tricks with you. Go to data, go to data. You will see this icon looks like a funnel. So this also at different time, you are able to observe and discover the shortcut key. When I use my mouse to point at the filter, okay, let me show this again. Ah, oh, yeah, the thing is gone. If I point it at this filter, you can see there's a pop-up box. It says filter with the parenthesis, control, shift, L. Control, shift, L, it means it allows us to turn on the filter like this. You can see all the small button. These are the filter. We can turn on. When to turn it off, also using the similar shortcut key, control, shift, L. So let me do this again. Control Shift L is turned on. 
And after that, we're, by the way, we're still in the topic of uh, shortcut key. Some people, they say, it's good I can turn on. How can I have a drop down here? I need to use mouse. I need to use mouse to click in order for me to filter. I just want to look for the IT department and show all the IT department here. So actually, ha, to have a drop down here, that is also a shortcut key. This one, you need to memorize because there's nothing you could uh, use the odd to find the, the key there. So these are quite a standard one. The to expand to have a drop down. So the shortcut key is odd down arrow key. Yes, now you can turn on the filter. Turn on the filter is control shift L. Control shift L is turn on the filter. After that, you select one of the one of them. Just make sure your active cell is on that particular filter. Press Alt down arrow key. Alt down arrow key. You're able to see the list. Ha, ah, so I can see the list. So after that, people start questioning. Ty, I can see the list. I need to use, I still need to use the mouse to select the, the selection here. I can see maybe I do not want to have the deep, I do not want to have a management and sales. I only want the IT. No way, man. I still need to use the, my mouse. Uh, this is the shortcut key you want to memorize. After all, down arrow key for you to go down. In order for you to move between them, all this movement, you will use the tap key. Tap key allows you to move or navigate. To move it back will be shift tap. After you reach this particular section, to turn on or turn off the check boxes or this tick mark or the check boxes, the key will be space. Pressing the space bar allows you to turn on and turn off the check mark as if you are using your mouse to click on that. So let me show you. Alt down arrow key, I press tap. You can see now the focus is on the very beginning. Tap, 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 and tap. Okay. Since I'm going to select on the IT, so I can select entire things to turn it off. I press the space bar to turn off everything. And I go down arrow key once IT is selected. I can press space to confirm the selection. I do not need to tap to go to the OK button. Just observe the OK button, the border. That means the outline is a bit thicker compared to cancel button. So now what you need to do is just by pressing enter key, we'll do enter key. Ta -da! Okay. After a while, some people will say, I want to filter those the row, they are manager only. Similarly, alt down arrow key, make sure the active cell is on the row, alt down arrow key. Instead of using tab key, maybe I want to go reverse, go reverse, I will use shift tab key. You can see it goes from a cancel button, it just reverse, shift tab, shift tab. So this is another way how we're able to work around Tap is going forward. Maybe you're going forward is a bit too long. Maybe you can go backwards. Sometimes it's a bit faster, like this one. I want to turn off everything. I just want to look for manager. I go down one this selector on the manager. I press space bar and can press enter to confirm the selection. Ta -da! After you have filtered a lot of things and you want to reset to clear them out or to show all the data. Uh, my personal experience tells me, normally people would just go and data, there's a button called clear. A lot of time people will just go this one. If your data has, if, 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 if you have huge data and your data has formulas, if you use clear this option, it is very, very slow. The, if you want to see everything, I will encourage you to do this. Turn off the filter and turn on the filter. The keyboard shortcut is Control Shift L and Control Shift L. Just press Control Shift L twice. You are able to clear all the filter. 
and while maintaining the filter. My, my testing, I have used Excel for many, many years, and this one really, really faster compared to just normal clear. So therefore, one of my favorite shortcut keys is Control Shift L. Now, let me show you. You can see the filter is still shows here. It has the final button. That means this column has been filtered. This column has been filtered. I will use Control Shift L to turn off. Once it's turned off, all the data will appear. And I want to maintain the filter button. So now I will use Control Shift L again. So in short, Control Shift L twice will reset the filter. So this is my 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 wiring. You find something interesting like this one. If you if you learn something new using this kind of shortcut, can you type yay to celebrate a little bit small win? If you learn something new, small something new here up to now, can type yay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. A big yay. <laughs> okay. So this is the things we could do more with Excel. And let's see what other things you could do. So after we have something like this for a while, and oh, I can see some smiley face. I want to do something different. I want to do some formatting. Huh, formatting also a bit tricky. Some people, they like it. Some people, they don't like it. For example, I go to home and the common things people do, the common things people do will be bold, italic, underline. Okay, maybe the most may have a background color, text color, increase the font, reduce the font, changing the font size, make it with the border. Wow. If let's say need to use mouse to control, it's still okay. If let's say without the mouse, it's not that easy though. Huh. Okay, so now I'm going to explain to share with you. Actually, the formatting, what you can see on the ribbon here, this thing is called ribbon. Okay, this group, the inside the ribbon is group inside the ribbon, yes. This thing is rather limited. There are more options available for you. Do you know that? Ah, okay. If you are using the mouse, they are the place you could click is click on this button. Click on this button. It allows you to see what are the more things you could do with the cell formatting. Let me go here and I can click on the this called launch dialog. And some of them, sometimes you will have the keyboard shortcut. This one is Control Shift F. Control Shift F. It will bring you towards the font. And this is the time you can see beside changing the font, beside changing the style, the size, you are able to change the underline. Normal underline is only single. Here you can see double underline. Whatever changes you perform here, you can see the end result appears in part of the preview. Beside that, you are able to see there are more options. In addition to the font, you can see alignment, number, border, field, and protection. Oh, okay, this is nice, this is cool. And to move between the tab, I need to use mouse. Without mouse, no way, man, no way. Okay, tell me, unless I have a touch screen, I can touch my screen. Okay, again, to navigate between them, remember our BFF. Yes, our BFF. Using the tab key. Tab key allows you to move in, uh, no, not, not tab key, okay, that's the one key. Huh? Okay, control tab key. Control tab key allows you to move in towards the right side. Moving towards the left, can you guess? Yes, control shift tab, just with addition of the shift key here. Control shift tab is just going opposite direction. So let me show you. While this focus is on the re on, on the tab of font, I want to go towards border. I will use control tab, control tab, control tab. If I say this is the end, I press control tab, it will go towards the beginning like this one. Control tab. I want to move it back. I will use shift tab, okay? control shift tab, control shift tab. So this is how you're able to move forward and backward by pressing control tab or tab. 
And maybe I want to do some changes on the font. On the top, you can see there's this very fine dotted line here that shows the focus. The focus is over there. So because just now we were moving the focus there. To move the focus inside here, I want to move it inside here. I will use the key. Yes, you got it right. It's tap key again. Tap key. Let me show you. Tap. 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 Whenever you move, you can see the whole thing is highlighted. The focus shifted as well. Tap is going forward. Shift tap is going backward. Uh, okay, left shift, right shift, they are the same. My personal preference, I will use one hand to control the tap, which is my left hand. If let's say I use one uh, right shift and the tap, I need to use two hands. I'm lazy guy. I'm lazy. I'm, I mean, I'm lazy guy. Okay, so now I want to, <laughs> I will use my thumb to hold the tap, uh, to hold a uh, yeah, no. there's a lot of key to remember, a lot of keywords to remember. After you use for a while, you will you memorize. Just remember the key for you to move forward is a tap. Backward is shift tap. The, for here, is something extra. You can test. There's only two more keys you could combine. Either it's alternate key, odd key, or control key. So you can test it. After a while, you will just you, you could see the pattern of the shortcut key. It's only combination between between these three keys and the alphabet A to Z. Odd, control, and shift. Only these three alphabets are uh, these three, and we need the alphabet. That's it. That's very simple. You just count the permutation, non permutation. You just count the combination as as bit permutation. Okay, I don't want to go that area. <laughs> okay, so there are a lot of things you could experiment here. So after this for a while, and I want to uh, I want to do some adjustment. I want to select uh, this one. I want to make it bold. Control B is to make it bold. And yeah, underline is U, Control U. So after this is done, and now I want to do something different. I want to do something different. Are you ready to have something different on the cell formatting and not many people aware? Do you want to know this? Yes or no? I'm going to share something different here, especially for the numbers. You want yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, see? I will ask you. Hey, <laughs> okay. Like, so when I've selected this one, now I'm using combination of the mouse and the keyboard so that you're able to see the movement. See the movement. A lot of time, people, they want to do formatting on the cell. They will select this one. They will use their mouse to right-click and they will choose one option. It says format cell. You say one option, say format cell. The keyboard shortcut. Okay. This is something universal as well in Excel. It's quite universal. Format cells, the keyboard shortcut is control with number one. Control one. This two key is very universal. Almost any places in Excel, you want to do formatting, you can use control one almost anything. For example, you have a chart. You want to format the particular bar. You can use, when, you, when the bar is selected, you can use control one rather than right click or that rather than double click. Control one is allows you to do a lot of formatting options here. Just remember control one, it means something to do with the formatting. Let's come back to here. I want to press control one and I want to go towards number. Inside here has, has a lot of things for you to experiment. Very, very powerful. A lot of things for you to experiment. And now it's a 10,000. If I say I want to have a 10, 000, 000, I will go to number and start using a comma separator. It will look something like this. Number. Use thousand separator without decimal. I, let me without decimal. It will be something like this. I go to number, use 1000 separator and without decimal. So I can see the numbers looks like 10, 000. This is okay. 
What if I want to make myself stand out from the rest? I do not want to show this one. And sometimes, especially the number is larger, a lot of all the numbers is more than 10,000, more, more than 1,000. This one, it makes the numbers is clouded on the screen. It's not easy to read. They'll be much more elegant. I want to show it like this one, 10.0K. I want to show something like this. So I'm going to share with you how you are able to turn the number whenever it's all the more than 1,000 to be something like this, 10 with one decimal point something, K. K means 1,000. K means 1,000. So let's do this together. Just remember, I just selected the numbers here. I press Control 1. And inside here, I go to the last one. It says Custom. It says Custom. This is the place for you to experiment. And a lot of formatting you could do inside here. Very, very simple, yet powerful. At the same time, not many people aware. So what you could do to change to the formatting 10,000 to be 10.0K, it be something like this. 0, 0.0 comma, put the space and K. Because the K or the alphabet, it may have a special meaning inside the formatting. In order for us to have this kind of habit, I will encourage you, whenever you want to type, uh, display some alphabet inside the formatting here, double quote, K, double quote. Double quote, K, double quote. So this is the thing you want to do. So let me show you. And I want to do this here. Temp uh, 0. Point Control one is not working. If control one is not working, I'm not quite sure what's happening. Are you using Mac? I'm not quite sure. Okay. Mac, the stroke key may be slightly different. No. Uh, are you using Excel or some? If not working, maybe you can go and right click and choose format cell. Online version will be slightly different. If let's say you're running from a Chrome or browser, control one, it means a different meaning. Maybe later I can invite you to share your screen to see what's happening and everyone can learn from a question. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see I changed this one and I can see the example, the end result appears on the top. No, just select the numbers. Just, just select the numbers will do. And you can see the sample, it becomes how many K, how many K? Now this is, once it's done, not the whole column. Yeah, not, not necessarily the whole column. Select the place you want to do the formatting. If let's say the entire column, you want to do the same formatting, then you could select the entire column. Because I only want focusing on these four numbers, I will just select these four numbers. Yep, select 10,000 and press control one, it should be okay. Let me press okay to show you the result. So this is the outcome. You may realize all of them is more than 1,000. So nothing less than 1,000. So I can go back again. I do not want to point zero. It just looks redundant. I press control one, control one. I go up, go back up here. I can remove the dot zero so the outcome will be something like zero comma space i want to have a space between a number with the alphabet k double quote k double quote so this i want to do some adjustment i do not want to show the dot something dot zero because all of them they are more than thousand so once it's done, I can press OK. You can see all the numbers changes. If I double click any one of them, I double click, I still can see the actual number. If I change it to 20,000 and press Enter, it will change as well. How the sample to become 10K only. No effect. Yeah, it has no effect on the calculation. 
is only showing on the surface and the actual number is still the same. Good question, good, good question. If let's say I just equal this multiply by two, I will expect 40,000. Let me press enter, 40,000. So it's correct. So it doesn't influence the numbers. If I key manually, key manually 20K, so if I use this equal, the one I key manually 20K times two, I will get an error because this is an alphabet, it's not a number. So very good question, very good observation. Yeah, it's working now. Very good, very good. I'm so happy with you. <laughs> okay. So far, okay, up to now? Ah, okay. Let your experiment for a while. Let me pause here for a while. How to select the all row to K? You just select all the numbers. Either you are using the mouse or you're using the keyboard. Either way, it still works. Select all the numbers. Okay, good, good, good question. I like that question. Might become, okay. Now the, uh, okay, maybe I want to invite you to share your screen. Okay, now I want to have more interaction. I want to invite you to share your screen. Okay, maybe Nadia. Nadia, you want to share your screen so that I'm able to assist you? And everyone learn from each other because when someone makes some mistakes, it's a perfect opportunity for us to learn from theirs. Okay, you go up the 15,000. Okay, you go to custom. Very good. You need to have a comma. Remember, you need to have a comma. Without comma, it doesn't understand. Comma means this formatting, I want to take out whatever thousand. Yes, got it. Very good. Thank you, Nadia, for your sharing. Okay, Tamana. Okay, all are 10K. You want to, sh okay, let me stop sharing here. Okay, Tamana, you want to share your screen? Hopefully I get your name correctly. You're welcome, Nadia. Yes, please share your screen and we're able to learn together. All they are 10K. Could you select one of them? Maybe the, all your numbers you key in is 10K. Maybe you change one of the numbers to become 25K, 25,000. You just key in 25,000. Just key in 25,000. Enter. Very good, because when just now you say all oh, they are ten k because all the numbers they are ten thousand. Got it. Very good. Thank you for your participation and thank you for your uh, sharing. Okay, let's see. Any more question about the formatting? Hey, not it was not before. Hey, what what do you mean? If you're able to turn on your mic, I think that'll be faster. Yeah, actually I put all the numbers. It was as you were showing. First one was 10,000, then 50, 25, then 15 like that. But when it changed to K, 10K, so it was like all 10K. Okay. Let me request a remote control that Okay, request a remote control, you just need to approve it. And later when I have a control, you can let me control your mouse for a while. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let me control your mouse. And how we are able to investigate, this is a very good way, a very good question for us to troubleshoot. Why something doesn't work? Okay, I just click on the numbers, check on the formula bar, this shows 10,000. I click the next one, it also show 10,000. I click the next one, it will show 10,000. So all the numbers, they are 10,000. Yes. So because of 10,000, that all of them will be 10K. 
Yeah, but pre previously I put first one ten thousand, and then second one I think twenty five, and then fifteen, like okay. that. Way. Very good. If that's just something somehow some mystery magic just happened, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> okay, this is a good way for us to go and undo. That's undo. That's a drop down button for you to have a list to show what has happened. Okay. Yeah, see, it's something be called auto fill. You okay. have fill down. Yeah, you have copy down. You can you just not use this option. Yes, yeah, copy yes. down. Yeah. If you use this method, yeah, you are copying the value oh. thousand go down as well. So, so how to do it here? Yes, very good. Thank you for your question. We're going to learn something different. Okay, I just zoom in. Sometimes yeah. after we have spent all the blood, sweat, and a little bit of tears, I want to have this formatting. I want to apply the same formatting for the rest of the numbers. I could do something like this. Select the place I want to have the formatting to be copied. I go to home. You on the left side, you will see something like a paint brush. It says format painter. Yes. Click on this once and you are able to select the place you want to have the same formatting and let go of your mouse then. Ta-da! Oh, wow. Okay. This is the first option. Some people may be saying, um, Thai, I have a few places I want, I want to do similar formatting and this method, it doesn't really work. Okay, let me undo. Let me undo by pressing Ctrl Z. And now I go back here. Select the place I want to copy the formatting. I go to Format Painter. Normally, we use single click. We use double click to copy the things and it will not release until we press Escape. Now I press double click, click, click. Just observe, I can use my mouse to click once, click, click. So this is how you are able to go to many places and click to apply the formatting. Okay. Does yeah. it help you? Yes. Yes, thank you, thank you. For, thank you. Thank you for our question and we learned something different today. Awesome, yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is how we are able to learn from other people's question. Yes. Good, good, good. Yes, wonderful. Okay, now let's see the timing. How about we have a... Okay, uh, how more? Okay, we just started one hour. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Now we have know a little bit about keyboard shortcut, all those things. And the next thing, let me show you what are the things you could do differently here. Just now I apply all the numbers and we just use the format painter. Sometimes, uh, this is something a secret as well. Sometimes I have, um, I do not want to show the salary. Maybe, okay, salary I want to show. Maybe I do not want to show the bonus. Okay, some, some company, they do not want to show the bonus. Uh, they do not want to have the bonus to be visible on the screen, but they want to see the values and they want to use that for calculation. Maybe the bonus here, everyone will have 500. Okay, I just keep it simple. I just keep it simple. Everyone has 500. And maybe this guy is about uh, 5,000 special case and this guy has 10,000, just the bonus alone, okay? So I want to hide these numbers, but I do not want to hide the entire column. Normally people will just select the entire column, right click and hide it. But I don't want to hide the entire column. I just want to keep it there. Maybe only certain cell, I just want to hide them. If that's the case, there are few methods. Huh. Okay. The cheeky method would be, <laughs> okay, select the place you want to do so-called the hiding. Actually, the data is still there. It's not visible to naked eyes. I change the text color to white. <laughs> okay. It's not yeah. disappear. It's cheating, it's cheating. If, I, if I'm a smart person, I will select the entire worksheet and change the color to black. I can see the whole thing again. Until so this is not quite safe. The second method will be something called related to the things we have just learned. 
on the format cell. Maybe I want to, I want to hide this, select them, control one or right click format cell, control one or right click format cell, go back to the same place it says custom, go back to the same place it says custom, inside the type, it, by default it is general, remove general, and you type triple semicolon, semicolon once, twice, and thrice. Triple semicolon, you will hide the numbers, the data, everything there. And the best thing is the numbers or the data still remains. If they say they slide the entire worksheet and change the color, they still were not able to see that with the naked eyes, unless they know how to change the formatting. Otherwise, the thing is, is, is like hidden. So let me do this to showcase to you. I go here, I key the semicolon once, twice, and thrice. And on the sample, you can see it's blank. It's blank. Let me press OK. You can see if let's say without careful inspection, it looks like it's not there. If I want to do, if I want to do some calculation equal to this particular cell times two, enter. Oh yeah, I want to change the color. I want to change the formatting. Maybe I want to make it a thousand separator. Then copy the formula down so I can see the numbers here. So it still is there. Still the same. If I go back here, double click, I'm still able to see the data hidden behind the formatting. Okay, very good. I think maybe after that, we, we are going. Okay, so far, any questions up to now? Might disappear from the first semicolon. Yes, because it's a number. If I apply the same thing for the rest, everything will disappear. Maybe I use Format Painter. I click on the alphabet text here. It will disappear. If I double click, I still can see the bonus. The triple semicolon it has a special meaning. It has four parts. Yeah, four parts. Let me go a bit. Uh, this one is for your understanding. The four parts. The first part before the first semicolon is a positive number. What's the formatting you want to be? Since I've specified nothing, all the positive number were gone after the first semicolon. Second semicolon is for the negative number. If you have negative number, you need to have one more semicolon to make it disappear. And the third part will be zero. Zero, that means you need to have a one more semicolon. And the last one will be alphabet text. So this is how the semicolon works. Positive number, negative, zero, and alphabet. So by applying triple semicolons, you are, you are able to hide almost any data you have in Excel on the cell you have selected. Nice. Yeah, this is how we are able to do some cheeky stuff. Semicolon? Then the text will not change, right? Uh, text will not change. Uh, using this one, this method, yes. Uh, all the positive, negative, as well as alphabet text will disappear. Let me show an example here. Maybe I'll put some special color here, just to illustrate, just to illustrate. I put some color here. Okay, positive number, 100. Negative number, 100. Zero, as being zero. Text as in text data okay so i will select all of them control one now i just test one by one go to custom go to general the type i remove them now i just have one semicolon just one semicolon i press okay because all the numbers will disappear because they were text will still remains i go back here okay I have two semicolons. Let me do this. Oh, it will automatically become two semicolons. Then I apply one more semicolon. I press enter. Then the text will disappear. Looks like if I use a one semicolon, it will automatically append one more semicolon for me. So that means it will automatically hide all the numbers whenever I use one semicolon. So this is how the things behave. Thank you for your question. I learned something new today. <laughs> okay, so far, any more question? 
Calling once. Any more question? Calling twice. And so, okay. Now we are going for a short break, short break, so that you are able to digest both and keep yourself hydrated and go and do some uh, bio break. <laughs> Show this again. Okay, let me show you again. Let me undo, undo, undo. Okay, so this is positive number. Okay, this is positive number. Let me do this positive, positive number. And this is negative number. This zero and this is text. It has four parts and they are separated by semicolon. This is the formatting. I just like them. Control one or format cell, go to custom. Whenever I press one semicolon, whenever I press one semicolon, Excel will automatically to make it two semicolon in my current version. In different version, the behavior may be slightly different. In my current version, when I use one semicolon, it will automatically become two semicolon. So that means it will hide all the numbers positive, negative, as well as zero. So let me do this. I press OK. You can see everything disappears. But the text still there. I want to hide the text as well. So I go back and by pressing Control-1, by pressing Control-1, go back to Custom, go back to Custom. I add one more semicolon just by ensuring the type. It has triple semicolons. Semicolon once, semicolon twice, and semicolon thrice. So this is to ensure I have covered all possible kind of data and they are hidden with this method. So let me, after I put one more, one more semicolon, press enter, text data disappear. If I double click, the data is still there. Same with number zero, same with the negative number, as well as the positive number. Cool. Nice. Yes. Okay. Good, good, good. To hide student marks. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to hide the student marks? There's another way to do it. Ah, I hopefully you're not sending the extra pressure to your students because they know the tricks. Hi, yeah, it's like the whole thing have removed the formatting. <laughs> okay, maybe we have a short break, short five minutes break, and we will come back after that. Short five minutes break, we will come back after that because I want to keep myself hydrated. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Whatever question you have, you can keep it in the chat, and you. Uh, whenever we are back, I will address your question. Just give me five minutes break for me to keep myself hydrated and go and release some water to pressure. <laughs> okay, with that, see you all after five minutes. And five, four, three, two, one, and time. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Yes, I'm back. I'm back for more. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we have learned about the, a lot of shortcuts, a lot of things. And some people they like it. Some people, wow, oh, my finger jam. All this one, they are not pressing so much of the keyboard suddenly. They need to press so much. Wow, oh, their finger jam. Okay, cram. Okay, it's perfectly okay. Just do some stretching. You will be fine. And now we want to go a bit different, switch a different gear. Before that, I want to ask any question that you want me to address. If let's say I missed out certain things, I'm going through the chat. Any question? Any possible question? Okay, that's the one. How can I lock the cell from being unhide and change? Maybe you want to keep it towards the end of the QA. Can I think it's Zach? Yes, okay. Towards the end, you can ask more questions, something outside of the things we intend to cover. So basically, today's the first session is to let you experience the fun, the joy, and the excitement of using Excel. And based on today's response, I will be shaping, 
and I'll be deciding what are the, what are the things I want to cover tomorrow. If the screen has no selection box, how can I do first click without the mouse? I'm not quite sure, Yong. You want to share your screen? Okay, oh, the selection box. You need to use a Control Shift L. You need to turn on the filter first. Without the filter, you will not able to select the box. Hmm. I presume you want to do this Control Shift L. Not sure it's uh, easy. Time. I mean, uh, if the screen we need to select one box, we need to use the cursor to point somewhere to click the first click first. So without mouse, can we do the first click to have something selected? Just one. Uh, box. Yeah, talking about Excel. Yes. Uh, could you share your screen? I want to see where is that box. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the term is quite generic depending on the location. The uh, I can't share the screen though. Huh? E, are you using the web, the Zoom version or the install the Zoom? Uh, it says someone else is participating oh, sharing. Okay, let me. That's me. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> okay, like I believe you are able to share your screen now. Okay, it means that I need to do the first click like this. So without this first click, like somewhere else, like there's no selected box here. I want to use my cursor to do the first click, this one. But without this, can I use my keyboard to do the first click? Ah, that means you want to bring the focus back to Excel. Yeah. Because whenever you see the active cell, there's a means the focus is back to Excel. Yes. To switch between the windows, the keyboard shortcut is Alt Tab. Okay, let me type in the chat. That'd be easier. Oh, oh yeah, it's back. back. Does it help you? Yes, it's back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I covered something outside of Excel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question. We learned something different. Yes. Okay. There's a lot of shortcuts we can experiment. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And any more questions regarding the previous session? Calling once, how to show the numbers after we hide the bonus. Okay, very good. Okay, let me bring back. And where's my file? Okay, yeah, it's back to here. Uh, yeah, I just want to bring it back. Okay, there are a couple of ways how we are able to get it done. Uh, the easiest method, the easiest method is to remove all the formatting. The easiest method is to remove all the formatting. How to do so? Select the place you want to remove the formatting, or you can select the entire worksheet whichever you are preferred. And you can go to a cell inside the home. There's something called cell style. There's one option, it says normal. Just select normal, you'll remove all the formatting. Click normal, you'll remove all the formatting, including the background, the color, everything is gone for good. So this is how the easy way, how you're able to remove the formatting. And because of this, a certain part of formatting, you just need to redo and including the date. The date, you will show number. If you do this, the date will become number. You just, you just need to format the date into back to date. Lah. Don't know what I'm saying. Okay, let me do this. Undo. Okay, <laughs> let me remove this. If these are the date, I clean my date, uh, date and time. If I select the entire worksheet, if I select the entire worksheet, Cell style, normal. You can see the date becomes the number. Time will becomes the decimal. So what I what you could do, just correct the formatting. This will be the date, and the second one will be the time. So this is the way how you are able to navigate the thing around. Hope this address your question. Yes, Faha, how to show numbers? Yes. Any more question? Calling once, calling twice, but show negative. Okay, Tamana. Okay, you want to share your screen to see what's happening over there. Negative. I believe it's something. Okay, what has happened? Oh, because you use equal. When you press now, now it's showing like this. Previously, I put the data and then I format, and now it's showing like this when I am clicking. 
โอเค press a s k i p สี่ press a s k i p key key s k i p y e s somehow doing certain things something in between <laughs> and the active cell is not here active cell is somewhere it's not in this screen yeah it's it's not in in this screen yep okay now it's back to the screen you just know why you press equal and you go to somewhere else uh this thing happened especially uh, rather than using equal sometimes when you use negative sign and click some other places excel will perceive we are keying a formula when we start with the equal sign, plus sign, negative sign, Excel will perceive we are keying some numbers or some formulas. So how can you type this? Uh, what do you want to type? Like uh, as you were showing, there will be positive number and a negative number, and then zero and text, then we are going to hide it. Ah, uh, okay. When I want to double click, it will be shown. So, okay. yeah. Okay, maybe later I will address your question towards the end. Is that okay? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so thank you for the question. And now we have to move on a little bit. Okay, Excel is a giant calculator. So what does that mean? We are able to give Hello. Excel instruction on how I'm we are class able here, I'm going to class with Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, now I just want to do some calculation. This is the way how I'm able to introduce you, introduce you the power of calculation, especially the formula in Excel. A lot of time people, they're not quite sure how to use formula in Excel correctly. Therefore, people struggle a little bit. So now let's go to a new worksheet. To go to new worksheet, you can click on the plus sign at the bottom. You can click on the plus sign at the bottom. And I just need to two columns, keep it simple. One is called quantity. And another one is I call unit price. I just need quantity and unit price. In the quantity, I just want to have a number of incremental of 10. That means 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. To have this kind of incremental number, rather than keying the numbers manually, we can key in the first two numbers. That means 10, enter, 20. I just select these two numbers. When I select these two numbers, I could go to the bottom right of the active cell, this thing is called fill handle. Fill handle. It's very, very important for you to know how to use fill handle correctly. After I select these two numbers, the difference between these two numbers, they are 10. The difference between 10 and 20 is 10. Okay, so Therefore, if I use few handle to drag it down, Excel will know it needs to be have incremental or decremental between these two numbers. Now, 10 to 20 is increased by 10. So if let's say I want to drag it down, it'll be 20 plus 10. Further, every time I go down, it becomes plus 10 of the previous number. It will be something like this all the numbers. So this is the way how we are able to do some numbers uh, whenever it has a sequential pattern. Yep, very good. So I have this thing, I just like two and just drag it down. And now I just want to go to the next one is on the unit price. I just want to have an incremental of 0.5. That means 50 cent. I key in the 10, the next one, 10.5. Because the difference between 10 and 10.5 is five, I just like two of them. Go to fill handle, drag it down. This away. This first method to drag it down. Let me undo. Another method you could do is to double click on the fill handle. This is what I've done. 
Example, the data next to the cell I want to copy, it has data up to the row number eight. If I go to field handle and double click, so it will automatically fill down until we go towards the last row of the data. So let me show you again. I go here, double click on the fill handle. So it goes all the way down. Last step. Is this the last step you're referring, Fahad? And this is the last step. Select, I just key in the first two numbers select them to tell Excel, hey, based on these two numbers as a starting and whatever their difference, just use the, the difference between them and generate the subsequent numbers. So I can just double click and have everything goes down. So I have these two ready and now I'm going to calculate the price. The price is the quantity multiply by the unit price. Excel, all the formula in Excel, it starts with the equal sign, equal quantity, multiply, it uses asterisk, asterisk, unit price. And I can press enter. So I will get 10 times 10 will be 100. Because the subsequent one, it will be using the same formula rather than having me to type it all over again. I could just go to the field handle and double click. Let me show you. I can double click. I can copy all the way down and the formula will follow through as well. So far, okay, able to follow up to this step? If yes, can you tell me a uh, yes in the chat? So lost trying to follow on YouTube later. Thank you. Okay, okay. So now Excel is just like all the grids, the reference or the cell reference, it goes in this manner. So now let's understand how the cell reference work. And this will maybe a little bit stronger to some of you are totally on almost near ground zero. So now I will go a little bit slower. For those who are quite good with this one, later you can stay on. I have, there's another more tips about the formula here. So I based on this, A4 is this one. It means two cells towards the left. It's two cells towards the left. Excel doesn't store A4. Excel stores two cells towards the left. This is how Excel stores the formula. And meanwhile, the next one, the B4, Excel will start one cell towards the left. So because of this positioning, I copy the formula down, everything it works perfectly. Everything works perfectly. One, two cells towards the left, multiplied by one cell towards the left. If I copy the formula here, control C, I go towards the right side. I just go towards the right side. I just paste it here. I will get zero. If I investigate the formula by pressing F2 key, it means to edit. It copies the positioning exactly the same. It says two cells towards the left multiply by one cell towards the left. So this is how the Excel formula works. It's very, very important. And a lot of time people struggle because they are unable to see that. Just remember Excel do not necessarily understand G7 and H7. Everything goes by the position from that formula, position of that formula. So this is what people normally refer for this kind of self-reference as relative self-reference. So this is what normally people refer this, relative self-reference. So far, okay up to now? Ken? Okay up to now? Thank you, thank you, Christopher. 
Thank you, Yao. Thank you, Nadia. Okay, Ken. So this is so simple. Let's up the game. Let's up the game. A lot of time, we may not have the unit price like this. They duplicate for all of them one by one. Now I want to have the quantity. I just copy the quantity. Control C. I go to a brand new worksheet. I paste it there. I just, I'm just lazy. I just want to have the quantity over here. And the unit price is somewhere there. Maybe this 10.5. And I want to calculate the price. Okay, this will be the unit price. Okay. So be something like this. Unit price, let me put it underline. That'll be easier. I want to do the calculation. Now I just go to a brand new worksheet. It looks something like this. So let's, let's wait for a while for you, for about 30 seconds, for you to prepare to here. Only one unit price. All the price, they are blanks. And let's wait for about 20 seconds. Okay, welcome back. Now let's do the formula calculation. Let me zoom in a little bit. And now I'm going to do the formula calculation by having quantity multiplied by the unit price. Or we just equal quantity multiplied by unit price. Or press enter. I'm so happy. Okay, now I'm going to copy the formula down by go to the small dot. This is called fill handle. I could just double click to copy the formula down towards the end. So I can go here and double click. Oh yeah, something wrong. Let's investigate. The first one, the reference, it was perfect. Let's investigate the second one. The second one is somehow the reference is a bit out. Excel understand it is one cell towards the left multiplied by two cells towards right. And you can notice when I copy the formula down, the reference will shift proportionally as well because this is a, still a relative reference. Relative reference so it will move as and when we move it all over the places relative reference it doesn't work in this context i want to make the relative as an absolute reference i'm going to change it to an absolute reference that means no matter where i copy i always want to refer back to d2 this is called absolute reference let me show you how to get this thing done by pressing Ctrl Z to undo first on the copy formula. I go back. Whenever the cursor is within the D2, either at the very beginning or towards the end or in between, you press the key. This key is able to switch the reference type. Switch the reference type. The key you want to press is F4. F4 allows you to change the D2 to be something like dollar sign D, dollar sign 2. You will see something like this. So that means it has a dollar sign. It means it will fix on the row D, a column D, and you will fix on the column uh, row number 2. So that means it will always refer to D2 it will refer to D2. So this is the thing we want to do so that we are able to turn the relative reference to end, something called absolute reference. So it always go there no matter what. It always go there no matter what. So let me press F4. If I press F4 too much, you can see the dollar sign will appear differently. 
This one later we will cover is also one of the important topics, very, very important. So just continue to press F4, F4 until you see a $2 sign, until you see $2 sign. After this done, you can press enter and you are able to copy the formula down by go to the small dot inside active cell, the few handle, and you could double click to copy the formula downwards. So let me go to the few handle and double click to copy the formula downward. So this is a perfect and correct way of working with absolute reference. Okay, managed to get it done? Yes or no, managed to get it done? Yes, I can see. Yes, get it. Thank you, thank you. So we have this F4 not working. If your F4 is not working, if the F4 is not working, you may want to combine with one more key. It's called Fn on your laptop. If F4 doesn't work, sometimes you press F4, it becomes the brightness, mu, the volume control, and some weird control. You just need to function press the function key, hold it, and press F4. Absolute reference. Okay, got it. Very good. So this is a very simple way. And a lot of time people, they struggle just because they have no idea to make the relative reference like previous one, where the formula will constantly change as and when I move it down towards absolute reference like this one, it always referring to a specific cell. So this is a perfect absolute reference. That's one more thing. And I will go a little bit even slower for you to grab the concept. So now we go to a new worksheet. You can go to a new worksheet. I want to have something like this. I want to have the numbers for example, 100,000. The next one will be 200,000. And I want to have incremental of the thousand. I put a thousand separator. And on the top, I want to show as an percentage. 1%, 2%. Okay, I want to have a percentage on the top. Maybe up to 6%. Okay, maybe here, I do not need the decimal. Yeah, I don't need the decimal. I want to calculate the interest. So this is the intention I want to do, the things I want to achieve. I want to calculate the individual or the cell based on the row above and based on the column on the next of them to calculate the values. For example, here will be 1% of 100K. And meanwhile here, each of them will be something similar. Here will be 2% of 400K. So which mean here, yeah, just multiply. So these are the things I want to achieve. Maybe here, maybe the example will be 3%, 3% of 600K. So which is something like this. So I want to have the formula in this way. So I let you all to experiment this before I share with you the answer. So let's go for you to experiment for about 30 seconds. Is that enough? 30 seconds? Okay, lah, 30 seconds. Uh, just get this thing ready and no right, no wrong. Find your own way. Find a way to get this thing done. And you all have 30 seconds and the time start now.
10 seconds. And five, four, three, two, one, and time. Welcome back. Yes. Okay. Time. So I see one of you has done it. And let's invite this person to share. Okay. No right, no wrong. Everyone, we learn from each other. We learn from each other. Okay. Zach, you want to share with us how you approach it? We are learn from each other. Calling Zach. Is that okay? Mm, I don't see any response. Okay, right. let me share with you what are the common things people do. A lot of time after people didn't know about absolute reference, they will do something like this. Most likely they will do something like this. They will just equal the amount multiply by the percentage above here and press F4 and press enter. And they will just copy the formula down by double click on the field handle, double click. Okay, then the next one. Equal this multiply by C1 and press F4 and enter and go and double click. So they do this all over again and again. Actually, this is possible by using one formula. Yes, just by one formula. Let me show you the final result. Later, I will walk you through how you are able to get this thing done yourself. So the actual outcome, the end result will be something like this. I multiply by this and done. So this is how you are able to get your formula done easily. Want to learn? Want to learn? <laughs> okay. So this is very interesting. And a lot of people, they are not quite sure how to struggle, especially with the formula. They feel panic. So that's why I go a little bit slower. And formula is the essence of Excel. Really, a lot of formula, a lot of calculation just because of this essence. A lot of people struggle just also because of primary, because of this. Yeah, I got palm up. So before we continue, let's see the any pattern about this calculation. First, I observe all the percentage is on the row number one. You see everything they are on the row number one. Same thing. B1, C1, D1, E1. So they are on the row number one. So it's okay. I see some similarity. And meanwhile, all the bigger number here on the left side, they are on the column A. A2, A3, A4, and so on. So because this is the similarity between them, that also means all the formulas will have a consistent reference on the row number one as well as the column A. So this is consistently. So what we could, what we have learned just now, example here, the cell is B2. B2, this is, this type is called relative reference. Relative reference. If let's say I have a dollar sign B, dollar sign two, this is called absolute reference. Okay, typo. Okay, reference. Okay. <laughs> There's another two more type of reference and not many people, they want to spend a little bit time to understand. So these two and another two more type of reference is very, very powerful. It gives you extra flexibility, especially you're using formula. That will be dollar sign B2. So this means absolute, absolute, I, I put in abbreviation ABS, absolute column, relative row. Another type is B dollar sign two. So this will be 
relative column absolute rule. So let's explain a little bit. Whenever you see alphabet B, these are the columns, columns here, like the one on the top. This is column B. So now you can see dollar sign B means whenever there's dollar sign, it means absolute. Whenever there's dollar sign on number, number means the row. Row is on the side, horizontal. So this is dollar sign two. So this means it's absolute row. So this is how we are able to mix them up. And with this awareness plus either A and one is constantly there. So that means whenever we press F4 on the formula, we just want to make sure only one dollar sign before alphabet A, one dollar sign before number one. So this is the thing we want to make sure and after that, we are able to get the formula done. So this is the first criteria. So far, okay. I want to make sure you are able to understand, grab this thing. Let me know if you want me to explain a little bit again. So far, okay. Can you grab it? Can if you're okay, can you type okay in the chat so that I'm aware? Okay, thank you, thank you so far. Okay, very good. So now with this awareness, the next thing is I want to start creating the formula. Before I start creating the formulas, I realized all these formula they will be the same. How to calculate all the numbers here? Now I'm going to show you, share with you how to calculate the numbers. Okay, so I'm going to have the same numbers here. Normally, for example, if I say I key in the data called ABC, I want to have all the cells here with filled with ABC. I most likely will be copy, control C, and highlight the entire range where I want to have an ABC as well. I will press control V. So this is very common method people use. They skin the single cell. They key in the single cell, ABC, copy, and select multiple cell where they want to paste it. They only paste it there. So this first method. Second method of entry will be a slightly difference. I will select the range or the place I want to have the same data, same formula, or maybe I want to have the same numbers. I want to have everything same. So I want to do something like this. First, like the range. Range means more than one cell. This is range. I key in A, B, C. I key in A, B, C, and I can press Control, Enter. Normally, people will use Enter. Now you want to use Control, Enter. Control, Enter, it means whatever range you have selected, they will be having the same data, either numbers, text, alphabet, or same formula. So this is the power we could use with control enter. Now I want to invite you to select multiple cells. After you select, just straight away to type it, not necessarily to click on the worksheet again. After you select, straight away type, and then complete the whole thing with control enter. So let me show you. I select multiple. I key A, B, C, control enter. So I got all this thing done. Maybe I don't want to have ABC. I want to have a different place. I want to key in one, two, three, control, enter. Same thing. Maybe I don't want to have one, two, three. I just go to a different place. Maybe I have multiple places as well. Something like this is just weird. I just key in eight, seven, six. Just a normal number. I press control, enter. It works as well. So this is the thing. As long as we are able to select the range, we key in the same thing, press control enter, all of them will be having the same thing. So let me undo. So this is the foundation, why I just explained the foundation of getting the formula up and running and super fast. So let's do this together. Let's do this together. Select the blank cell. If let's see with some things here, we may want to remove them. Make sure it's blank. On the left side, it has all the numbers. On the top, it has all the percentage, so I select them. 
equal select on the left side some people they want to select on the top it doesn't matter they are the same it doesn't matter um, let me select on the top that'd be easier to see select on the top and because on the top they are consistently on the column one i row one so i want to continue to press f4 until i see there's a b dollar sign one so this is the thing i want to see b dollar sign one so let me press f4 once f4 twice so this to get b dollar sign one you continue press f4 until you get it if let's say somehow your keyboard f4 doesn't work you could just go inside the formulas and start keying the dollar sign it is still okay so after that to go towards the end of the reference multiply multiply is the asterisk a2, A2, because on all the numbers, they are consistently referring to the column A. So therefore, the dollar sign I want to see will be something like this, dollar sign A2. You continuously press F4 until you see something like dollar sign A2. So let me do this. If I press F4 once, F4 twice, F4 thrice. Maybe I press F4 one more round. Right? Now mind, just continue to press F4 until you see dollar sign A2. So this thing you could continue to press F4 a little bit slower. So now I have gotten the thing I want. Just to double check. That's dollar sign number one, which is correct. And I want to have a dollar sign A, which is also correct. So after that, I could just continue with the control, enter. So this is how you are able to witness the magic. Control, enter, and ta-da! You can investigate and any of the formulas, they are always referring to the row, one and column a if i go towards the end this is also the same thing and this is the true beauty of the excel formula reference so let you all to experiment for a while let me know if you have some question i will show the formula on the screen like this Once you have done, you can type done in the chat. Whenever you have done, you can type done in the chat. Hi. Yes. The row one, the row, row one uh, it should be format as percentage. Mm -hmm. And it will work, isn't it? Uh, depending on the context. If you want to share your screen, is that okay for you? No, I don't have the screen. <laughs> Ah, okay. So this one, uh, the what the the reason I used as a two different numbers. One you can see this is the whole number that, and the top is a percentage. Is for us to easy to differentiate them. No, and, uh, true. But uh, to get the percentage, because it's either you put one and then you key in the percentage. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can also format that uh uh that uh cell uh. To show as percentage. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So if we format the cell as a percentage, then only it works that hundred uh, thousand times that one. Then it will be one thousand. 
Mm, not necessary. If let's say mm. I do not want to use percentage, I could do something similar as well. I could turn all of them into a general number like this. Uh, then you do a decimal. Ah. Uh. Same thing. That's what, that's what I mean, because it's either you use the decimal or a percentage. You have to mm. format it as a percentage. But if you put a one and then you key in the percentage symbol, uh, you will not get a 1,000. Mm. Yeah, okay. That means you multiply and put the percentage here. Yeah, uh, yes. You have to put ah, it there. Okay. Yeah. That would be a different way of working. <laughs> you see a result difference now. Okay, very good way of working. Thank you for your question. I learned something different. I can put the percentage inside formula. Usually I don't do this. <laughs> now I learned something different way. Thank you for your question. Okay, let's see. Must be shown because not showing me. Okay, I'm not sure about the question. Okay, let's see. Do the columns in the numbers must be shown? Because it's not shown with me. Oh, okay. Can. Maybe I can invite the uh, Fahad. Fahad, you want to share your screen? Hello, Fahad. Which one you mean is not shown? I mean, here, I put mm -hmm. the columns are here, but uh, they are not shown here as with you, like you, like you did. Uh, you mean the comma? The... I mean, yeah, I mean the comma, sorry. Ah, okay. Sometimes the different Excel version, they may copy, maybe just not have accidentally copy all the formulas, the formatting. Oh, I see. Ah, you can just copy the formatting. Like just now, we go to the home. On the left side, it looks like a paintbrush as format painter. Before, prior to that, you may want to select the, the cell with the correct formatting you want to copy. You can press escape first, then select the, num the numbers with the comma. Select the numbers with the comma, then you go and paintbrush. And then now you select the numbers you want to have the same format. Yep, got it. Got it, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your question. Okay, so let's see. So far, okay, up to now. Just want to know, I did not overwhelm you all with too much. I just want to know how many more you are able to take on. If I say 100% is the maximum, how many more you are able to take on? No right, no wrong. Some people, they are okay. Some people, they are they almost uh, overflow. <laughs> okay, how many more you are able to take on? If I say 100% is maximum, where are you at this present moment? Can you type in the chat? Eighty percent, still excited. Okay, seventy percent. <laughs> okay, seventy percent. Thank you. Seventy percent. Need more. Eighty percent. Okay, to have more. Seventy. Good. 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 Okay, so let me share with you. And after a while, we have come out the Excel, a lot of things. I need to prepare the report for submission. I believe you are able, you want to use something similar back to your paper as well. Sometimes you want to do some chart, you want to do some analysis, and you may want to print out certain report from your Excel. So now I'm going to cover a little bit that a little bit more. Then towards the end, I will have about 30 minutes for QA before we wrap up the session. So now I just go back to my file. Okay, now I just go. Okay, imagine this is the things I want to bring out to my boss to see. I want to do some simple formatting, maybe the background color. Here, I want to have some color as well. Now I just want to print it out. To print it out is I can press Control P. Control P is for print, and it will bring us to print preview. Inside here, we are able to do a lot more changes and more formatting. One of the popular ones is we are able to change the 
orientation. The vertical mode is called portrait. Horizontal is called landscape. Okay, I see there's something. Whenever you see there's a percentage, you just need to change the formatting. Just change the formatting to default or change it to with the decimal. It should be okay. It should be able to fix your issue with the percentage. So let's continue with this one, formatting. Now you can see the whole thing is becomes vertical. I want to make it horizontal. I can do something like this. You can see it becomes horizontal. Now, because the data here is not huge, so everything is still able to fit inside the page. Now I want to artificially to increase the width, increase the width and increase the height so that it makes the whole thing is not possible to fit into a single page. So now we are, now we are working to generate a final report. I press control P you can see on the bottom section, it says it has a nine pages here. Because I have extended the column width, so therefore it will occupy more space. The row height I have increased as well, so that it will occupy more papers as well. So therefore it can become nine pages. So now we are able to see, we are able to turn the orientation to portrait. You can see how the things looks like. Go next page. You can see the next page. It's a bit different, it's a bit weird. If I turn to pot, uh, turn from portrait to landscape, so it's a bit also weird as well. Sometimes I want to squeeze everything, cram everything into a single page. I'm able to use something called scaling. Scaling. By default, it's no scaling. So that means if I say like this context, when the row or column is occupying more space, it just take more papers. And another thing I could consider is to fit everything into a single page, everything into a single page. Let me test this thing. I fit everything into a single page. You can see it will be a bit smaller. And on the bottom, you can see it is only one page. So it's squeeze everything into a single page. So this is how you are able to squeeze the whole thing into a single page. If you want to send this file out as a PDF file so that the recipient able to zoom in based on the PDF file and still able to see the numbers. So this is one of the ways you are able to handle it. Another scaling is for you to scale to fit everything by the column like this one. Fit all column on the page that means on the top part, you will see the column then bottom part, you may overflow to other pages as well. Let's see how it works. Hey, let's see, fit all columns. Currently it's still okay, it's still able to fit everything into a single page. Uh, if I fit the row, now it becomes it has two pages because one more if overflow to the next one, overflow to the next one. So now I want to explain a bit. Sometimes on our report, there's certain section I want to repeat, like this one. It carries some information there. If let's say I go to next page, I do not see the one on the left side. So it makes the reading a little bit difficult to read as well. I want, I'm not sure why it's the numbers here. So I'm not able to cross check whether the calculation is it correct multiplied by the left and on the top, I have no idea. So this is the time you are able to ask Excel to repeat certain row or certain column when it's unable to fit everything or whenever you overflow to the next page. So let's go back to our Excel. You will see there's something called page layout. In a certain version of, of Excel, you may see the wording either page, sometimes it could be layout. Inside here, there's one option. It says print title, page layout, print titles. So this is the thing you want to click. Let me show you print titles. Here you have the option to choose which row you want to repeat. It could be more than one row. Which column you want to repeat on the left. It could be more than one column as well. 
So we are able to do so. So back to our context, I want to repeat the row. I, I want to repeat the column A. So I'll click inside here and select column A. So the answer will be something like this. So your one could be slightly different. So you can just test it out, see how it works. And I have, after I've done with the selection of the column, I want to jump straight towards the print preview to see the result. I could click on the print preview without clicking on the OK. Because by clicking on the print preview, it will automatically select the OK and it goes back to print preview. So let me click on print preview. So this is the first page. If I go to second one, yes, I got it. So it just added here. So this is how we are able to repeat certain rule and columns to make our report a little bit easier to read by repeating the certain rule and certain columns. So after this done, maybe I want to know a little bit, um, I want to adjust the page, especially on the header. You can see the header is quite blank. It doesn't show much. What is the title of this report? I want to uh, set the author. Maybe I want to set who created this one, when the report is generated, so that it let people have a sense of it. Uh, okay, this report is quite recent, so it's quite updated. I want to have the date, maybe a time then. So this section on the top is called header. The bottom is called footer. Now we are going to change the header and footer. There are a few places we are able to go into the format header and footer. One of them is while we are inside print preview, you can see there's the option says page setup. Page setup. So this one option. Another option is you are able to go to page layout. You go to page layout, go towards the launch dialog. This small button is click on the small button here. It will bring you to the same place there. So let me click. And one of the options it says header and footer. Header and footer. In the drop down here, it has the standard header you are able to choose. So let's explore what are the headers available. At page one, and how about page one of the total page? How about the sheet name and maybe the date, confidential, the date and what page number. I can see the file name. I can see there are many more. Maybe all these things, it doesn't suit our requirements. So that is the time you could use this button called custom header. Click on this custom header. Custom header. All the header is divided into three sections, left, center, and right. The same thing applies for the footer, left, center, and right. Whatever thing you are able to do on the left, center, and right, they are the same thing. It just divided into three sections. There's no way for us to decide how broad or how uh, the size of each section is always there. So now I want to, on the left section, I want to show the report author who created this report. Okay, I on type report prepared by keying your name. I will do something like just keying report prepared by just that. After that, I want to, on the right section, and maybe on the center section, I want to show the date and the time when this report is generated. So you can see there's a button here. This is to insert the date, and this is to insert the time. So make sure I click on the center section, click on the insert date, click. And I want to have a space between the date and the time. So therefore I put a space between them before I click on the insert time. And you are able to see something like this.
we have a space in between them. Then, so this is how we are able to, it, it will be automatically changed to the current date and the time whenever you get the report printed. So once this is ready, so I can press OK. And now I go back to print preview. And on the page header, I can see prepared by time. And this is the date and the time as per my computer. Your one will be different because our computer date and the time will be slightly different than here. You can apply the same thing on the footer as well. So once you're happy with all this and you are able to generate or print out the report either on the paper or save it as a PDF file. So maybe I want to, maybe how about I want to add the logo here add the picture there. It's also possible. Let me show this page setup. Okay, then footer. Maybe now I just want to go to custom footer. I go to center section. This is a button for you to insert the picture. I will just insert a random picture from my computer or you can go online and search for the picture. Maybe I go, go online and search for uh, dragon. Okay, let's pick a dragon. Okay, pick a dragon. Insert. Then the picture, how the picture works on the header and footer is slightly different than how we work with the Word and PowerPoint. Slightly different. Now it just only shows this. It doesn't have a place for us to resize. I just, I just need to press OK. You can see it looks a bit oversized. When I press OK, you can realize it's too big. I want to make it smaller. I just need to go back to page setup. Header and footer. Go back to custom footer. Go back to custom footer. Make sure you click inside the picture and you are able to use this one to scale, to resize the picture. Let me click on this. To scale or change the picture, you are able to scale either by the percentage or either by the exact width or height. This is what I've done is click inside here and go here and go here. So this is how we are able to resize. Maybe I just go towards the height. I just want it to be maybe 5 cm. I can press OK, OK, and OK. Now you can see the whole thing is a little bit smaller. And this is how we are able to have the header and footer with the image. The actual image, it could be a, your company logo, your team logo, maybe your university logo as well. So this is how you are able to incorporate this thing inside your Excel report. So far, okay, I think we are about to open for Q&A. So far, okay, up to now for the page, the entire printout, setting the orientation, setting the header and footer. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So there's any more question about this, about the reporting layout? If not, we will be opening for Q&A. Sir, I have a question. Yes. So for the date and the time, it will be updated uh, each time I modify the file, right? Yes. Every time before you print out the report, it will get updated, not modify the file. Okay. Okay. okay very good question. Make a space. Uh, the space and the gap. Okay, just now the date and the time, what I did, I click on the insert date. I manually type a space that I just manually type a space. If you want to have more space, you just key more space before you insert the time. So that is how you are able to insert the space between them. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, now let's open for Q&A.
Okay, if you have some other any specific needs or specific things you want me to share with you, and you can ask a question. I think before that, maybe you want to have some uh, to share with all of us. What is your biggest takeaway by typing them in the chat box? What is your biggest takeaway? Okay, okay. I see a lot of you. You done a lot of shortcuts, the absolute reference, the BFF, the tab key. I am so excited to see you have achieved of all. And one of the comments you have replied, it's so easy. You are able to do a lot of things. You have whenever you have that kind of feeling. Oh, I'm so happy. Mission accomplished. Yes, for the day one. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um. Bila, you want to take over? Uh, I think Abdurrahman is going to take over after maybe 10, okay. 15 minutes. But uh, how about the Q&A session? Yes. Q&A, any Q&A, or you want to have a photo? Which one you want to go first? Uh, okay. Uh, for the Q&A, um, maybe if you would allow me to start my first question. Uh, I have a lot of questions uh, regarding Excel. And the first question is, I used to work with uh, visual basic analysis. VBA, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so are we going to touch a little bit on that or the basics of it for tomorrow's session or? Maybe... Uh, depending on the uh, your, your needs. Because VBA, not everyone is able to uh, comprehend. Some people, they like it. Some people, they are not ready yet. Oh, I see. Yes. I want to see overall. If everyone is ready, uh, I'm okay. If let's say they are not so ready, I can go some other things. Based on creating uh, some chart, make the chart beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Were you covering uh, uh, VLOOKUP functions and all that? Yes, I could. <laughs> Tomorrow. Are you going to have it now? Let's see your timing. <laughs> Can I can have a uh, VLOOKUP maybe tomorrow? Let me take a note on the paper. Because the VLOOKUP has one limitation, need to use another method to overcome the limitation. If I cover half, it's just like hanging. Mm. Okay. If you have any specific needs just now, maybe VBA, I, I'm, I find a simple way to let you experience the VBA. Mm -hmm. because I, uh, I searched a lot on the YouTube and the internet but I didn't find any resources for VPA it's quite old but I had to use it in some of my projects uh, yes. uh, it has a different approach maybe I want to make it simple tomorrow oh okay okay yeah thank you any other requests? Okay, just a one question. Say before print, we do we need to make to PDF? Not necessary. Um, because whatever you see on the screen, this is the format you are going to save as a PDF, or you can send it to printer and print it out on paper. So they are the same. What time tomorrow? Will be same time tomorrow. Yeah. Same time to tomorrow. Seven to ten. Thank you. Pivot table, okay, Michelle asked for pivot table. Maybe I can combine pivot table together with the chart so they're able to, they are able to perform some analysis at the same time, you can convert them into a chart. And therefore, because, because uh, your question, that will re require some preset data. Unlike today, today is, we can work on the learning from a blank file Tomorrow, I will prepare the file in advance so that I need you all to come in a little bit earlier so that we are able to, we are you going to use the same Zoom link, totally same Zoom link, and you can come in earlier because I will be here earlier as well. I will send the file out. Once the time is uh, start, we will go. And if you miss the file, that'll be not easy for me to send it over again. Okay? So because tomorrow, we, what are the things you want to learn? You can type in the chat. Yep. So I let me say VLOOKUP, VBA, pivot table, charts. What else? What else you want to any questions, specific things you want to me, you want me to cover on Excel?
transfer data to SPSS. Hmm, okay. Very good. And sadly, I don't have SPSS. <laughs> okay. I'm not easy to demo. Okay, just for information, uh, in the academic institute, we learn SPSS. When we go to workplace, not many companies, they are using SPSS, just for your information. What if I'm working with a different department, each department has different reporting setting. Can we have a different setting for each department? So yes, can. Uh, that one, I think I will use the macro of VBA to do it. So that means you have same report. When I send to report uh, this report to department A, I will need to follow the, the, the header for department A. When I send to department B, I will follow the header for department B. So it's also possible. I will use VBA to cover that tomorrow. Okay, keep your question coming. What does BPA stand for, Tai? Say again. What does BPA stand for? Oh, BPA means Visual Basic for Application. In another oh, word, it means programming language inside Excel. It's very powerful and you're able to do a lot of reportings, a lot of manual work while you're still sleeping. Yes, yes, I'm interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. About the chart. Yes, tomorrow I will cover about the chart. Yes, the chart I will use together with, uh, with what? With a pivot table. Yes, thank you. VBA, Visual Basic Application. That's right. Data cleaning, maybe a little bit. Data cleaning has involves a lot of method. Uh, what kind of data you are talking about? Hmm. Because depending on type, maybe I show you a simple timing about data cleaning. That'll be easy. At least get you started. Data cleaning. Okay. Python. Python out of the topic for now. <laughs> okay. Data cleaning. Anything else you want to learn? Maybe I can have some background music while waiting for your question or your suggestion. Okay, X lookup, Ken. Very easy, X lookup. Yeah, someone raised the hand. It's a uh, Sumaya. Yes, hi. I have, hi. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is regarding the cell itself. Sometimes, I'm, sorry, first of all, I attend late. Maybe you covered this while I, I was not there. So sometimes the content of the cell is too long, especially when for, for PhD students or master students, when they try to analyze the previous studies and then then try to report everything in a excel table so the content is too long so that it's not breaking down in two lines skip only in one line so you cannot see the whole content at once uh, i don't know how to solve this problem the second issue is there a way to do grammatical correction or grammar uh, grammatical check in excel or no thank okay. you Thank you. So let me answer these two questions on the spot. Okay, I believe you have uh, some people they have, this is a very long comment like this, okay? They will do something like this over and over again, over and over again, when you press enter, somehow it just, just too long. Is it what you're looking for? Yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so whenever it's too long, there are two methods for you to consider. The first one, you could go to the home. There's something called wrap text. Wrap text is over here uh, inside home. Wrap text, it means whenever the text is over the column width, it will go down. It will go down and go down. It will go to the next line. So let me show you. Wrap text, it will go in this way. Let me zoom on a little bit. So this is how if I extend the column width, it will yeah, yeah. it will change the 
room height as well. So this is the first method. Second method is you are able to control when you want to break it down to a different line. Meanwhile, for the wrap text, it doesn't know. Maybe I want to have break a different line whenever after the full stop here. Maybe I want to have a, this is after two lines. I want to have a specific area to make it have a multiple lines so that it's easier for us to understand, oh, this is the first item, this is the second item, and so on. So if that's the case, you could do the next method, which means while you are doing some entry, something like this, this is a very long command. If you want to go to next line, normally we press enter. You want to use odd enter, alternate enter to go to next line while maintaining inside the same cell. Odd enter, we I want to type again, again, odd enter, again, again, again. So towards the end, you will see something like this. Something like this. You have a multiple lines, you have a things in between them. Does this address your question? Yes, thank you. About the grammatical check in Excel? Very simple. Just press F7. <laughs> F7. Same shortcut key like the grammar ticker check or spell check in Word and PowerPoint. F7, it will trigger the word or spelling check. So I will say, do you want to continue with the beginning? I say, yes. Let me click yes, and it will say no spelling error. So if let's say I have a typo, long, like this. I press F7, it will prompt. Am I calling something, Olong, lock on, or something? So watch this. So it triggers the spelling because the grammar, the, you are able to choose a language and which dictionary you want to use, and you're able to choose from here. So hope this address your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tan. You're welcome. Uh, sorry, Mr. Tai. Another Hi. question. Uh, how can I, um, to make the uh, entry of the first sentence or the first letter to be uppercase, is it, uh, is it possible to be automatically? First sentence. The is first holding. letter. Yeah, the first letter. Ah, okay. In the word, we have a shortcut key, but inside here, it doesn't have the shortcut key. Mm. Excel has a function to convert the whole alphabet here to uppercase, to lowercase, or the first letter as the different things. Let me show you, uh, in maybe in a different worksheet, it'll be easier to see. Example, the data I have is here. And just copy it down. I want to make, all, make this line to uppercase. It will be equal UP is something called upper, press tab key. Again, our BFF, tab key. Select this and press enter. It will turn the whole thing to uppercase. If I do the first alphabet of each word to be uppercase, there's something called proper. Equal PROP, proper, and press tab key. And choose the word or text you want to have. Then you can see the first letter of each word will be in uppercase. And meanwhile, if I want to convert to lowercase, it'll be lower. Lower, maybe I want to lower this one, which has changed to uppercase. I press enter. You can see it turned to lowercase. So these are the three things it may help you. Is it what you're looking for? Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, how much is difference between the Excel and Google Sheet? Very good question. The first thing is their spelling. Don't laugh. It's exactly the question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't 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 smack me. Okay. Uh, besides the spelling and the company, they own it. Also, difference. Don't smack me. That's the truth. Okay. Uh, the Google. This is very good to do some analysis and especially when to do something online and cross collaboration. The beauty of Google Sheet is free. And as long as we have a Gmail account, we are able to access it. And not so good thing about Google Sheet is, if let's say we want to process a complex data, much more complex, maybe more than few thousands or 20, 30,000 kind of rows, it will be slower comparing to Excel. 
because Excel is sit on our computer, it will run based on our computer processing power and it doesn't rely on the central processing power and go through internet. So these are the prominent differences between them. If you want to store the data, right, that will be easily to share across multiple people and not so much from the analysis, Google Sheet will be something you can consider. If you want to do much more comprehensive analysis, maybe towards some automation, Excel will be a better option. Hope this address your question. So let's play some music while waiting for question. Anything you want me to cover tomorrow? You can decide what you want to learn tomorrow. You're welcome, yeah. G. You can open your mic and just... Uh, okay. For the about six more minutes yeah. yes you can format um changing the case it doesn't use format we need to use a function either upper lower or proper it doesn't go by the changing the case no uh, unlike just now, either you can change the case with the K, but anyway, it's over 1,000. It doesn't work that way for alphabet. Yeah, welcome, Ahmad. Do you want to have a group photo first? Yeah, of course, of course we have. So... Yeah, uh, that's all the question. Uh, so, um, I'm having a question, but it's not related to our workshop uh, or our topic. I hear that your voice is clear. Which equipment do you use? Uh, which one? I didn't get your question clearly. Your microphone. My mic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you asking what mic I'm using? Yeah, which equipment? Is it oh, which mic? equipment? Yeah, this one I'm it... using, I, I type it on the chat. I do not want to, because this company, they don't pay me. So I don't want to say their name. <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay. uh, this is quite an affordable mic and the quality is quite good. Oh, I see. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Okay, like, uh, if you are comfortable, I would love to have you to turn on your video so that we are able to have a group photo before we call it for the first session. Can I see more and more faces? Yes! More humans! Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> After a while, looking at all the black boxes, I am curious, am I talking to human or am I talking to machine? <laughs> a scary thought. Yes, more and more beautiful and gorgeous faces. Get yourself ready. More and more are coming. We'll yes, more and more, more, we'll more, more. We we'll give them just <laughs> one more minute, then we can take the group photo. I will then pre turn off the chat. Okay. So then. So that whenever we are taking the photo, it doesn't have the message pops up. Yeah, spoil, spoil the whole thing. Uh, by the way, who haven't uh, 
register the attendance. We have sent the attendance form in the chat. Is there any other section? Sorry for this question. Yeah, we are going yes. to have session number two tomorrow. Same time, mm -hmm. 7 to 10 p.m. Malaysia time. Same time, same time. Thank you. From the game to the game. Okay. Uh, can we have the graph photo? Okay, three, two, one, smile. Just one more. Hi, Tom, can you take your side? Okay, again, three, two, one. Okay, I think I've taken two pictures. Thank you very much. So that's all. So by here, we would like to thank uh, Mr. Kai for all this rich information. We really enjoyed the session and we hope that the participants did as well. On behalf of ISSML and all its members, we would like to give special thanks to Mr. Kai for this amazing session. Thank you all for being with us today. We hope to see you tomorrow for day two at the same time. By here, we have reached our end of uh, day one. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. And see you all tomorrow. Thank you. 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 See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.